So politics came up. K. Carl, K. Carl's a Republican. K. Carl's conservative. Wait a minute. I'm more than a Republican. I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican. And I believe in life and power values of Frederick Douglass. Respect for the Constitution, respect for life, the limited power of government, personal responsibility, free speech. When they started going home that night, every single one of them told me, I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican too. <laughs> when the last person left the house, left my door, I leaned back against the door and said, Yeah, and it works! It works! For the first time in my life, I had the ability to drive the narrative, win the narrative, and win hearts and minds. Ah, I want you to have that same empowerment. So several years ago, I started this organization called Liberty Messenger USA. On the Liberty Messenger USA comes this Frederick Douglass Republican engagement model. I tried to get it approved through IRS, Frederick Douglass Republican, to give me a hard time. So I just had to go with the Frederick uh, Liberty Messenger USA. We're based in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. What I'm going to share with you that is this. If we are serious about defending liberty, the Constitution. If you want to know how to engage your family members and friends and share your conservative values without the fear of being called a racist, we must leverage the life and writings of Frederick Douglass. The left has no answer for him. This engagement strategy has been black barbershop tested. <laughs> you know anything about black barbershop? You go there, they talk about sports, they talk about politics, and if you're not careful, they talk about your mama. So you got to know how to engage. You got to know how to engage. Quick class on Frederick Douglass. Make sure you're on the same sheet of music here. Frederick Douglass was born 1818 in the Eastern Shores area of Maryland. The way I like to put it, Frederick Douglass was born below poverty. Below poverty because he was born into slavery. He was a slave for the first 20 years of his life. Never owned a pair of shoes till age 10, never slept a bed um, to age 8. He was homeschooled, self taught. He started his own homeschooling program while he was a slave boy on the plantation. He rejected the slave master's common core curriculum, what I'm telling you. <laughs> he was a slave for the first 20 years of his life. Fast forward a little bit. He escaped from slavery at the age of 20, 1838. Fast forward a little bit more. Frederick Douglass had zero days of formal schooling. Never been to school in his life. He was an advisor to five Republican presidents. Let's go through them right quickly. Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, James Garfield, Rutherford Hayes, Benjamin Harrison. Most folks don't get a chance to be one president. This brother was an advisor to five. He wrote three autobiographies and a novel. At that time in history, most, most blacks could not read and write, like 90%. This brother wrote three books. When I read that, I said, I can at least write one. <laughs> he died 1895 at the age of 77. He died of a massive heart attack. At the time of his death, Frederick Douglass had $300,000 in savings. Back then, calculate the inflation, that's over $15 million today. This is a brother, he began his life as a sub-zero percenter. He was on a plantation for 20 years getting that free stuff. I can make the case he was a 47 percenter. He died a 1 percenter. So his life is inspiring. When I go around the country and I talk to uh, inner city youth about success and let them know that success is not a secret, success is a system, and I share Frederick Douglass, they quickly understand and get it that they cannot out-victimize Frederick Douglass. All the excuses go away. That's his life, but his writings, what I want to share with you and touch on through things, his writings are important. Because when Frederick Douglass writes, of course, he writes with a form of slave perspective. What you see at the bottom are some of the things that we're dealing with today in this country that Douglass not only wrote about, he lived in. Economic prosperity. 
Douglas had one of my most popular speeches called Self-Made Man, where he lays out his philosophy for success. Douglas believed in embraced economic prosperity. He had $300,000 in savings. Free speech. We hear about how the, how the tyrants or the left is trying to limit free speech on college campuses. Douglas gave a speech in Boston called Free Speech for, uh, the plea for free speech in Boston. Douglas said, tyrants cannot tolerate free speech because they know the power of it. The next one there, the Constitution. Douglas said this on one occasion. He said, the Constitution reads, we the people. Is the, it does not read, we the white people, Douglas said. He concluded by saying, if black folks are considered to be people, then they should be benefactors of the Constitution. Douglas concluded by saying, the problem is not with the Constitution. The problem is in the application of the Constitution. The problem is not with the Bible. The problem is in how the Bible is applied. So thank God we have a literary legacy of the writings of Frederick Douglass to defeat the false rhetoric of the left and defeat their propaganda, that, that propaganda tax. Doug is the only patriotic icon that I know where when you incorporate Frederick Douglass into your pattern and your speech and your talk and your messages, it absolutely trumps the race card. You can't call Douglas a racist. He was a victim of racism. They say the founding fathers owned slaves. So when, when the founding fathers talks about liberty and the constitution, they're tainted. Because some, the, some of them did own slaves. But Douglas didn't own any slaves. But yet he writes with the same the passion and um, the view of, of liberty, natural law. Immigration. Frederick Douglass wrote about immigration. We're dealing with that today. 1868, Douglass was asked to comment on Chinese immigration because the Chinese being brought to work on the railroad. In a speech entitled, Our, Our Composite Nationality, Douglass said, For humanity reasons, let them come. This is the greatest country in the history of the world where you can improve your quality of life. You can rise from rags to riches. In that same speech, Douglass said, There's a process. He said, Number one, they must bow to the slam law. Bow is a form of respect, respect of the law. It's not a Tea Party activist talking, this is Frederick Douglass talking. Then Douglass said, number two, they must learn to speak English. Douglass believed in assimilation. And number three, he said, they must understand the first duty of citizenship. The first duty of citizenship is to obey the law and understand the value and the significance of our Constitution. Frederick Douglass. The left has no answer for him. If we're true to preserving liberty, we start leveraging Frederick Douglass into our talk and our message, the left, they got to go back to France or start jumping out of windows. They're not going to be here too long. <laughs> they have no answer for this guy. Religious freedom, of course. And the last one there, I'm going to show you something here. I'm not here to talk politics, but I want to show you some things how the left are truly tyrants. If we don't get our if we don't start winning the propaganda battle, it's toast for us. We don't have a message problem, it's a messaging problem. We gotta understand as conservatives, before we get a chance to speak, we have already been discredited. Because the left, they're good at propaganda, negative attacks, always throwing something against the wall. Demonizing us before we get a chance to speak. This is the Democrat Party's website. Their current website. Now, I'm going to show you something. You tell me what you think is wrong with it. This is their art history page. Take a look at the first 14 words under our history. Let me read it to you. For more than 200 years, our party has led the fight for civil rights. Anybody got a problem with that? <laughs> Let me read that to you one more time so you think I'm saying something silly. For more than 200 years, our party has led the fight for civil rights. That's a lie, isn't it? You talk about rewriting history? That's it. So, think about it now. If you don't know the truth, you can't recognize a lie. That's what they're counting on. Ah, let's bring Frederick Douglass into play now. 200 years ago was 1818. 
Slade was alive and well in 1818. Douglas was born in 1818. 1853, Douglas gives a speech called the Slavery Party. He said this, and I quote, the best representation of slavery in politics is the Democrat, Democratic Party. Wow. Once we learn how to win the narrative, and once we start incorporating Frederick Douglass into our talks, as we talk to people, you can change hearts, minds, lives, and votes. Some of the most conservative folks you will ever meet in your life are blacks and Latinos. We're not voting that way, but in terms of traditional values, what's going on? Why is this room more diverse than what it is? We have to learn how to articulate the message. Let me give you a word of hope. Through the ministry of the Apostle Paul, God has given us the answer on how to do diversity outreach. Think about it. The Apostle Paul was called and commissioned by God to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Those of us who are Gentiles, we are the benefactors of the Apostle Paul's outreach strategy. I'm here to tell you the Apostle Paul was, a, was an outreach or was a diversity engagement expert. As you recall now, the Apostle Paul, by occupation, he was an attorney and he was a tent maker. Am I telling the truth about that? Somebody got to say amen. Amen. <laughs> um, God called the Apostle Paul and commissioned him to establish a big tent. Big tent is a metaphoric expression for diversity outreach. We say it all the time as conservatives. We got to have a what? A big tent. That's why in 1 Corinthians 9.22, the Apostle Paul says this. I have become all things to all people. What he's saying is, I knew how to craft my message so I can deliver it to a wide range of people. You look at some other translation, the Apostle Paul said, I entered their world and I experienced life in their viewpoint. So if you enter my world as an African American and experience life in my viewpoint, you're going to quickly discover that the word conservative is not the language of liberty. It is a language of oppression. When you use that word, the wall goes up. It's not that we disagree with you, we're going to shut you down. You got to understand that. That's another time. So for another time. Okay? So, Leave it mention USA. Been doing this for 10 years. Caught the attention of uh, several um, leading people in the conservative movement. I was in Pennsylvania speaking, York, Pennsylvania. I was a keynote speaker at their Lincoln Day dinner. So as I finished speaking, sharing this message with them, Congressman Scott Perry made a beeline to my table while I was signing some autographs of books. He said, every conservative and every Republican needs to be trained in this messaging model. Do you mind if I set a private meeting up with you and President Trump? I said, let me think about it. And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the process now. I met with uh, uh, Paul Taylor at the White House to put together, I didn't know I've been working for three years, we're putting together an app so it have all the resources in there that you need. All the things I've shared with you so far, it's in the app. How do you respond when somebody calls you a racist? It's in the app. How do you respond when somebody calls President Trump a racist? How do you respond when someone tells you, okay, well, okay, call both parties have switched roles, you're never liar. The Republican Party today is the Democratic Party. How do you respond to that and turn it around and make it a teachable moment like the Christ did with the Pharisees and the scribes? It's going to be in this app. So here's what I need you to do today. Go to this website, and you can't read that, but get on our list, get on our VIP list. When the app comes out, probably in October, we'll send that to you, okay? So that's the website, email, name, let me know, click the button, 
And this page is going to come up. Hey, fantastic, you're on the list. But I need your help with something. I need you to take a one-question survey. I want to make sure that in this app, we cover everything. I need to know from you, what two questions do you have about diversity outreach and messaging that you want answered? For example, I got a question the other day. said, okay, Carl, please talk to me about this whole thing about Kaepernick and NFL players kneeling. How should I respond to that? How should I respond about this whole thing about Confederate flag and, uh, and the, and, and, and the, the uh, monuments? How do you respond to those things and you turn around and you don't compromise your faith? How do you do that from a Frederick Douglass Republican perspective? Okay, make sense to you? You need to do it and they tell two other people how to do it, to sign up. So we're gonna get this thing out there and put this, hopefully we can have this thing before the election. I'm really concerned about November. Make sure we keep our, our majority that we have and win some, I'm really concerned. But we need to, so what we've been doing the past 10 years, I've been traveling the country preaching to the choir, the conservative choir, and teaching the conservative choir how to go out and get new choir members. But give you a different song to sing, because the song we're singing ain't working. And it's called the Frederick Douglass Republican Melody. Frederick Douglass is the answer. He's the answer. I wrote this book. I'm not here to hawk the book, but I'm going to share with you what works. This book is not a dissertation on the political views of Douglas. It is a conservative action handbook. It gives you information you need so you can engage. For example, when you engage, one thing we teach is if you go to a potential antagonistic audience like the NWCP meeting, I've been to many of them, you don't go there and talk about conservative values. Ah, we could call them life empowering values. You follow me? Speak their language of liberty. So we identify, there are several life empowering values of Douglas. Respect the Constitution, respect for life, limited power of government. Now, listen to me now. Conservatives like to say limited government. Ah, what the left does, they turn it around. Limited government, oh, you want to take away people's entitlements. The limited power of government, what we're talking about. Okay, limited power of government. I give you five quotes. What did Douglas say about respect for the Constitution? The five things Douglas says about the limited power of government. Now, in this book, I call it limited government. You know, you learn through experience. I got tired of the left beating me up. So I realized what the problem was. I started writing things down, found out what happened, put the limited power of government. Personal responsibility, what, what Douglas said about that. Um, so it gives you the writings of Douglas that you leverage into your conversation. And it works, because he writes with a born slave perspective. That trumps the race card. I have some books here. The books are free. The autograph in each book is $10. All the books went signed, by the way. That's my capitalism joke for the day. Make sense to you? This is a God-given message. I did not come up with this. I feel like out of 350 people, 350 million people in the United States, I won the lottery. And God has given me the responsibility to travel across this country and empower liberty advocates, friends of freedom, how to engage. Where you can engage anyone regarding your conservative values and you don't have the fear of somebody calling you a sellout, a racist, an awful tongue. You have to cloak yourself with Frederick Douglass. You know how I know this strategy works? When you can get your parents to change how they vote, how they think, you know you got a persuasive message. I grew up in a staunch, I grew up in a staunch Democrat home. Staunch Democrat home. My dad's retired from NASA now. He has a lapel button and he wears, he goes to flea markets every day. That's all he does, go flea markets every day. <laughs> Bring all this up home. And, drop my mom nuts. <laughs> and he has, he has a button that he wears. He says, Fred Douglas Republican. In lieu of saying conservative. I know what your question is, can't call this great, but can a white person use it? It works, it's more effective when you use it versus when I use it. Let me tell you why. 
through the media and what we hear all the time. White conservatives are racist. They're racist, racist, racist. They have no redemptive quality in their life. If they're liberal, they're pure and pristine and can't sin. But if you're racist, there's no help for you. So if that's the case, if you carefully study and show yourself approved, and you get K. Carl's book, Shane's book, you get K. Carl's book, and you learn how to engage when you say that I'm a Frederick Doug's Republican and I hold him in high esteem, you don't expect a racist to say that. So this is not some cheap magician's trick. This really got to come from the heart. This is evangelism. That's what it is. Douglas is the answer. We can't save America. We can't make America great without Frederick Douglass. Remember now, the United States was more divided during the Civil War than it is now. And Douglas was an advisor to Abraham Lincoln on that whole issue. Makes sense to you? What questions do you have? I'll start right here and we'll go over there. Yes, sir. Uh, so I actually wanted to ask about it briefly, and you actually talked about it a little bit. Um, I wanted to know what, because um, a lot of people will bring up the, the party switch. Yeah. Uh, what, what would you say briefly about He asked about the party switch. They always bring that up. That will be in the app. So maybe what your appetite will have been. What they're saying is this, that all the racism that existed in the Democrat Party is now in the Republican Party. That's what they're saying. And they say that because in the 1960s when um, um, South Carolina, come up with his name, Senator uh, Strong Thurman, he, he joined the Republican Party. But here's the thing. The platform of the Republican Party has never changed. Okay? It has never changed. And so, as some of the Dixiecrats did become Republicans, but most of the Dixiecrats stayed Democrats. Here's how you respond to that. Racism has no political face. Racism has no political face. And here's what I get him on this one. You have to grow where God plants you. If God plants you in the Democrat Party, you'd be, a, you'd be a light in darkness. Don't just go along and get along. You have to grow where God plants you. And I always give them this quote. It's been apt to. It's a quote from Robert Brown Elliott. When I go to um, black churches and in the NWCP meetings and speak, and uh, I always end with this quote. It's a quote from Robert Brown Elliott. During Reconstruction, the first seven blacks to serve in the U.S. Congress were black Republicans. One of them was a gentleman by the name of Robert Brown Elliott. Here's his quote. He said, I am a slave to principles. He meant Christian principles. I call no party master. I'm a slave to Christian principles. I don't call the Democrat Party or the Republican Party my master. I'm going to vote my values. You follow me? You have to grow where God plants you. And more of that will be in that app. That's the kind of, whatever question you have like that, send that to me. Because we got to put all this in there because when you get this app, you got to be equipped. Have that, have that available to you. You got a question over here? Yes. You're next, sir. Uh, you said that if we use the word conservative, yes, sir. we can't put up a wall. Yes. What do we use? How do we address that? Um, the question is, that I mentioned that the word conservative has a racist connotation. What word should you use instead? Frederick Douglass Republican. Um, I, since I made that comment, i got to give you a little bit of the history. Why the word, this is in the app too, why does the word conservative have a, uh, why does it have a racist connotation in the black community? You ever wonder about that? i got to tell you. i got to give to you. Give me about one minute on this. 1964, July 2nd, LBJ signed the civil rights legislation to law, correct? Your staunch, racist Democrats filibustered, voted against it, correct? There was a certain Republican senator who also voted against it, not because he was a racist, he voted against it based on constitutional grounds. He got the opinion of a guy, a, a Yale University professor, a guy named Robert Bork. So Barry Goldwater voted against the civil rights legislation, legislation in 64, not because he was a racist. Matter of fact, Goldwater was an integrationist. Goldwater, when he inherited his family's department store, he hired black cashiers and went around Phoenix, Arizona, encouraging other business owners to do likewise. 
Gary Goldwater, he's the one who integrated the Senate Cafeteria in 1953. In 1948, he started the Arizona Air National Guard as an integrated unit. So he was not a racist, he was an integrationist, but with his no vote, he sided with the racists. You follow me? I'm gonna connect two dots here. What was Barry Goldwater's nickname? His nickname was Mr. Conservative. What was the title of the book he wrote in 1960? The Conscience of a Conservative. So the party of emancipation, the party of Lincoln, selected a guy to run as a presidential candidate who sided with the racist Dixiecrats with his no vote. When that happened, the word Republican Party, the word conservative, started becoming ingrained in the black community to be racist. Many of my family members were Republicans until 64. Republican Party don't vote us. Democrat Party is worse, what we gonna do? So blacks became Democrats, not because entitlements and food stamps. Blacks became Democrats because they were purged from the Republican Party. Go back and read what happened at the convention in 64 at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. All that would be in the app. Make sense to you? The Apostle Paul said, I entered their world and I experienced life from their viewpoint. That's how he knew how to craft this message. So if you go to an NWCP meeting, if you get invited to a black church, and you let, get up there and say, I'm a Tea Party conservative. Well, I'm a Reagan conservative. I'm a black conservative. I'm a Christian conservative. You might as well drop that last word conservative because of a black racist. That's what they hear. You're a Reagan conservative. You're a Reagan racist. You're a Tea Party conservative. Well, you're a Constitution conservative. Now you're a racist racist. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing the propaganda battle. <coughs> Fred, let us how we win. Question in the back. I got five minutes. Well, I got this guy right here. I'll come back to you. Yes, sir. Uh, I always stand up. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Mundy. I'm from nice to meet you. Um, I was wondering, I mean, like, Frederick Douglass has so many amazing quotes. Yes. Like, do you have, like, one quote that you just love and, like, that you really hold on to? Like, is there, like, just one quote? It depends who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to um, potential antagonistic crowd, and I know that they're, they're, they're my same ethnicity, I give this quote regarding political parties. Douglas said this on one occasion. No matter how bad the Republican Party is, the Democrat Party is worse. <laughs> um, another quote that I like about Frederick Douglass, I mean, there's so many of them. Uh, but that one that sticks out my mind. And it's, it, it keeps everything real. When you want to engage people, keep everything real. And I want to give this to you, because some of you are going to be future uh, running campaigns and doing these kind of things. I want you, when it comes to engaging the black community, I want you to think out of the box. I have pulled my hair out engaging Republican conservative political operatives about the black vote. Many operatives will tell you when it comes to the black vote, don't go, you can't get it. Matter of fact, they give you a quote from Barry Goldwater. Barry Goldwater said on one occasion, you gotta hunt where the ducks are. My thing is, why are you hunting for ducks? Because you should be a fisher of men. And the, and the thinking is this, when it comes to the primary, you gotta go focus on your base, don't worry about the black vote. That's what they, they just focus on your base, don't worry about the black vote. We're gonna get the black vote in the general election. How has that been working for you? You have to go after your base, but you got to go to the black community and plant the seed. And hopefully you have something to harvest in the general election. Write this word down, it's called Turkey Republicans, Turkey Conservatives. That's the term in the black community. A Turkey Republican, a Turkey Conservatives are those candidates who don't bother to go in the black community during the primary. They want to wait around Thanksgiving time when the general election comes around and think they're gonna get the black vote. You'll never get it. Black votes are not stupid. But the way you do it year round you got, we got to know how to guard ourselves against the pushback. You got to know how to inoculate yourself with Frederick Douglass. 
Friend, the nugget is your hood pass. <laughs> and it trumps the way to start, pun intended. One more, one more question in the back. Back there, yes. So I feel like an argument that might be thrown back if you, you know, call yourself a Frederick versus Douglas Republican might yeah. be like, perhaps have you ever received the argument that you might be a turncoat? I, um, the question is, the, I can't, how will the left turn that around? You see, Fred is Republican. Uh, they probably say, well, no, Frank and Douglas, what they say is this. Oh, if Fred Douglas was alive today, he would be a uh, Democrat, not a Republican. Here's how you respond to that. Of course, it's a bit of app. Fred Douglas has this quote. He said, quote, I am a Republican, a black die in the wool Republican, and I never intend to belong to any other party than the party of freedom progress. That's Douglas's quote. He said that. So that's going to put words in Douglas's mouth. Now, they say, they say the Democrat Party has improved. Well, I, I wrote this up in the app. It, I don't care how much the Democrat Party has improved. I don't care how much the KKK improved. I'm not going to join the KKK. <laughs> Democrat Party saw the KKK. Why would Douglas join a political party that put him in slavery? Why would you join the Nazi party? You follow me? That's the pushback we get. And believe me, I think I've got all the pushback there is, but there's some you may be getting on these college campus or any with your friends. We're going to deal with that and give you the answer from a Frederick Douglass perspective. Absolutely bone crushing. Game changer. So I appreciate you uh, inviting me, an opportunity to be here. Appreciate the board for the opportunity and the hospitality has been great. And like I said, I'll be in the back here. I'll be about another hour and uh, so you can get a copy of that autograph. Okay? Yes. God bless you all. <laughs>